What's up, peeps? Your boy Ricky Funes. Welcome to another episode of Tango's Boxing Talks. Today we have a special guest, and every guest that I have here is very special. Today we got Chris, the Nightmare Ariola, one of my good boys yeah. from uh, Riverside. Chris? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome, Chris. Thank hey, you, man, thank for you, coming, man. bro. Thank, thank you, you for, for taking me, the time bro. coming out here, man. Appreciate you, man. Thank you yeah. for inviting me, man. It's nice. It's a nice setup you got. You like it? Hell yeah, it's dope. I like it, man. I'm not finished. Starting still yeah. trying to put it together, man. Like that custom wallpaper. That's clean. That's pretty clean, huh? Yeah, yeah. My boy Hector at uh, the print shop next door. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's fucking badass. Yeah. What's up, Chris? <clears throat> What's happening with you, man? Like, we haven't heard nothing from you, man. What's happening? Uh, not a damn thing, bro. Just being home, being a daddy. How does but, that feel? You know, man, I, I enjoy fucking taking my son to baseball doing practice and, you know, taking little batting cages. And and all, honestly, like, he wants to be a professional baseball player. And I'm like, dude, you got to put in the hours, man. You think you think I started f***ing boxing I'd just go to the gym three days a week? Hell no. I was there every f***ing day, two days, two hours, three hours a day since I was seven years old. I'm like, dude, you want to do it? You got you to gotta practice every day. Oh, Even yeah. if you put one hour in, dude, you got to practice every f***ing day. Well, tell us, Chris, since you brought that up, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, since especially we're trying to interact with different people. It's not just only boxing fans, yeah. but people that are watching uh, this channel. Can Look, you tell them about who you are, what do you do, where you come from, how how you start in boxing and all that? See, um, my name is Chris the Nightmare Riola. Right? Why do they call um, you a, a nightmare? Oh, well. well. <laughs> that's, you know, that's one of my favorite stories. Um, When I was younger... Um, I had a lot of acne, a lot of acne, uh -huh. and um, I was gonna go out. We were gonna go out. Me and my friend uh, Alex and my friend uh, uh, Joey we were gonna go out to some fucking house party and shit. We went to go get a haircut, and this lady fucking butchered my hair. Like the fucking fade was like all off. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, I have to shave my head. So I shaved my head, and I used some dull razors. So there was some razor burns, <laughs> and there was like some red spots and shit. And I get out, my friend comes, picks me up. I get out and he goes, what the f***? You look like f***ing Freddy Cougar. <laughs> and sure enough, you know, from Freddy Cougar, it f***ing just evolved to the nightmare. And that's how I got my name. It has nothing to do with boxing, oh, which is gotcha. a crazy thing. So that's your nickname, The that's Nightmare. That's my nickname, The Nightmare, La Pesadilla. But yeah, I started boxing at the age of seven, man. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm, I come from a, 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 a Mexican family. My dad was a boxer. He wasn't the greatest boxer, but yeah. he was a boxer. Um, he started training people uh, at a gym, Huntington Park uh, Boxing Club. Is this in Riverside? No, nah, this is in L.A. This oh, is really? in Huntington Park. Yeah, yeah, bro. Oh, also, so you lived in L.A. before you moved to Riverside? Yeah, bro. I was born and raised in L.A., bro. Okay. Big Bad General Hospital, man. Orale. Yeah, bro. What the <laughs> fuck? All right. Yeah, bro. Like, psh. and like I said, you know. Um, what was the name of the gym? Uh, Huntington Park uh, Athletic Club. Okay. But there's a Nino, like, I would go with my dad to the boxing gym, um, I remember going to Hoover Gym. I remember going to Broadway Boxing. I remember going to the old Olympic... Uh, 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 the gym. I was yeah, just talking the, to Rudy about that. Stuff, you know, that's you know? funny you said that. So it's like, you know, since I was a kid, I've always been around boxing and shit. Yeah. And I always I always wanted to box. And my dad's like, nah, 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 nah. To finally one day when I was seven years old, my dad's like, come on, let's go. We're going to the gym. How many amateur fights did you have, Chris? I had about 160, 170 amateur fights. What what fighters uh, did you grow up in, in your era growing you know, up that became a big name? The crazy thing is that, like, there was a lot of fighters that were better than me. Okay. A lot of them, a shitload. Like, uh, uh, Larry Mosley. That's uh, Larry, Shane, that's Shane Mosley's cousin? Yeah, Shane Mosley's cousin. He was really good, man. He beat me. I fought him five times. He beat me three times. And... Um, he was actually part of the Olympic team that I remember. But the, the crazy thing is that, like, all these guys with talent, all these guys that were better than me quit, which is really? crazy to me. It just, just it just baffles my mind that these kids had so much talent and they just let it go to waste. You know what I mean? I was, I was lucky enough that my dad was always on my side, that he always, like... Um, it's not that he pushed me, but he was there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, of course. You know, uh, um, he took to every fucking boxing gym that he need, he thought I needed to go to. Take me to all to spar wherever I needed to go spar from Linwood to fucking Cobra Boxing, uh, um, Azteca Boxing Club, um, Resurrection. Back in the day when wow, Oscar, Oscar used yeah. to be there. Yeah. You know, I, I used to see Oscar and Pepe Riley 
Uh, Pepper Train. Riley was the bad. It was a badass. Hell fighter. yeah, he was. He was a bad motherfucker. And I used to watch him like train at, at uh, um, Resurrection. Yeah. And, and they used to also travel to different gyms to fucking yeah. get the working. What was it, the What was the best gym in that time that you went to? That you said, "Fuck, this is a tough gym. I don't want to go there right now." Um, Eddie Herrera. Really, Eddie Herrera had a. Uh, had two really good fighters. One of them, his name was uh, uh, Chachi, and another one was a uh, Chapulín. And uh, I beat Chapulín twice, and he beat me once. And this other kid, this is amateurs now, yeah, right? Yeah, and amateur. This other yeah. kid beat me three times, and I only beat him once. And I can never get my get back. The funny thing is, he sent me a message on uh, Instagram once, right? Uh huh. And he goes, "Man, Chris, congratulations, man, you made it." Blah blah. blah. I'm like, "Yo, thanks, but hey." You still owe me one, bro. <laughs> like, Did you ever no, get no it matter, back? You, nah, hell no, nah, bro. <laughs> and I tell him, bro, like, no matter what, no matter what happens, you could always say that you beat me three times. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And he, yeah, and and then, what 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 weight was this, Chris? When you shit. were growing up, what you, I'm, you never you were always not a heavyweight, but my first fight was in 1989 in um, uh, Westminster Boxing Club. Okay. And um, I remember there were. Um, they were selling like a bunch of like uh, collect collector things and stuff, yeah. and there was some Cleto Reyes uh, uh, boxing gloves, like little, like little. The fucking, small ones, yeah. Yeah, the small ones. Yeah. For, I told my dad, my dad goes, "You win, I'm gonna buy you these fucking gloves, right?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" yeah. So I remember uh, I fought this little white kid. Uh, he was like a little bit, a little bit. Oh, he was a year older than me, and he was like four pounds heavier. But I didn't give a fuck. I wanted yeah. to fight. The bell rang. I beat this kid's ass. Pillar to post, man. He was crying, crying in the ring, and I was like, "Yeah, I got my fucking gloves." What, what, what weight was that? Seventy-five pounds. Wow. My first fight was at seventy-five pounds, Damn. and I, I and the crazy thing is that like, now that I see my my son, he's he's eight, about to be nine, and I weigh him all the time. I'm like, you're only seventy pounds, bro. Pff, I was that way when I was seven years old, dude. You, you was little. he tall? Was he tall? Uh, were other, you were you tall at that I've time? I've always I've always been the tall kid. Okay. I've oh I'm lucky. I'm fucking fortunate because my dad's five five, my mom's five five. They're like little Mexicans, bro. And wow. I just came out big, and I'm I'm fortunate. And I'm lucky as fuck, man. And, and uh, Chris, talking about that, so you started at seventy five pounds, and you had over a hundred fights. Uh, going from there on, what when you started transitioning to become pro? When did that start? And uh, I know your your old trainer, uh, Henry. Henry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Round face. Did Henry always train you, or it was just your dad started and then Henry? So like, no, 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 hell no, bro. Like, bro, I started like again in nineteen eighty nine, bro. I started in eighty eight. Um, I was seven years old. My first coach, his name was uh, Hector uh, Rodriguez. They called him Shark. Uh, he was a trainer. An assistant trainer of the '84 Olympic team. Oh wow! So was, no yeah, way! Yeah, yeah, right here in the uh, uh, in LA. And shit. Really? Yeah, man. And uh, he was a uh, he was a veteran, um, a World War II veteran, man. He would tell us stories and yeah. shit. And he was a very, 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 very good man. And I'm I'm fortunate I had him. Um, I had uh, I've been trained. I trained with Joe. I trained with Henry, and that's so you that's about be, it. besides those guy, uh, Henry's always been your coach. Yeah, okay. as a pro. Yeah, yeah, as a pro. Uh, but as an amateur, I had another trainer named Juan West. Um, that's when I won the National Golden Gloves in uh, 2001. Where was that tournament at? Uh, Reno, Nevada, bro. Oh. I fought five days straight. Five days straight, I kicked everyone's ass. I was, like, so close to getting the Golden Boy Award, you know. Because really? Of, yeah, yeah. Uh, that day, uh, Aaron Aaron Garcia won it. Aaron Garcia, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, he was, uh, he was like a 132-pounder okay. from San Diego. And what weight was that? Uh, one... 178. I was a light heavyweight. Shit, you were growing up already, huh? Yeah, yeah I, was, I was 2001. I was 178. Um, and I had no problem. I had no problem making weight. I would weigh in every day. I eat like shit every day, and I still made weight. <laughs> um, but yeah, after I won the National Gordy Gloves, I came home, and I partied, and I started drinking a lot. Next thing you know, I'm a fucking heavyweight. And I'm like, fuck it. Did you take time off before that time? Before you, you... no. Nah, my, my daughter was born. Once my daughter was How born. How old were you at this time? At uh, this time now? Uh, twenty one. My daughter was okay. born in two thousand two, like uh, the, like right, like seven months after I won the national gold gloves. And I'm like, fuck. So she's twenty two years old now, right? Yeah, man. She just turned twenty two. Wow, time flies. You telling me, man? She's the reason I started boxing again. She's the reason I'm, I am where I am right now because. Yeah. 
I got I had to do something, bro. So and I don't we, like working. What? <laughs> <laughs> don't we all? Wait, what year did you turn pro, Chris? Two thousand three, I believe. And who was your first promoter? I didn't have a promoter, no. bro. I didn't have nobody. Was um, Al Heyman at this time? I know you were one of Al Heyman's besides uh, Vernon Forrest. I know that was one of Al's first yeah, fighters. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my first fight was in Laughlin, Nevada. Uh, first two fights were in Laughlin. Then uh, my third, fourth, my third through eight fights were with um, uh, Kenny Thompson. Rest okay. in peace. Really nice man. Um and Wes Crockett is the one that found me. What's his name? Wes Crockett. Wes, yeah, he passed big away. Big Wes, yeah, yeah he passed Wes. away. Yeah. Rest in peace, man. I've been lucky to have a lot of great people in my life, really? man. Really? Yo, Wes Crockett was the most solid person you could ever meet, man. Yeah, he was very cool. Very, very good man. And I'm lucky that he found me. Then he took me to Al, and the rest is history, That's man. Right. You know, after that, um, I fought for Dan. Then I love Oscar, Dan, man. Rest in peace, Dan, man. And then I just stayed with Dan. Dan is just... Dan man, was the Daddy man. Daddy-o. Daddy-o. Daddy-o, man. Yeah, man. You know, talking <clears> about <throat> Dan, um, Dan would call me at um, 5 in the morning, 6 in the morning. He grew up here in the valley. Yep. As I did, right? And uh, he would call me at 5 in the morning. Well, hello? He goes, hey, Rick, how do I get to the Burbank Airport? <laughs> I go, Dan... You've been going to the airport traveling so many times. Why do you have to ask me? Oh, because this blog. Come on, Dan. I'm sleeping. You know, <laughs> why were you waking me up at five in the morning to know where the Burbank Airport? If you've been through this route so many times, he goes, Oh, I just wanted to talk to you. <laughs> I go, fucking guy. You know, but that's funny. Dan was the I think I think Dan was one of the best promoters ever, man. Not only was he the best promoter, but he knew how to sell a fight. Yeah. Nowadays, I'm sorry. I I I, I have not seen one promoter like Dan. How many and, fights did you have with Dan? My, my majority of all my professional fights. I said at least. Because I know, I remember when you were coming up, Chris. Yeah. I, I remember you were coming up. What what was the wor- the hate things that you hate to do when you were training? Training? Because I know you were a fuck up, Chris. Training? I hated training, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I hated it. You know but, what I remember? Oh, go ahead. But but the thing about it is like once you get me in the ring, I'll work. Yeah, you I'll fight. fucking work. But the hard part is getting me to the gym. Fuck from the gym to to from the house to the gym, it'll be like three miles. I'll find an excuse. Yeah, I'll be like, oh yeah, I had to go fucking do some laundry. Oh, I had to go get a new tire. <laughs> oh, I had like you always had an excuse. Always had an excuse, bro. When you when you were coming up, where you started making a name for yourself, Chris, the Nightmare Riola, Chris Nightmare Ariola. What fighters were you knocking out and beating to get to that point where I still remember the day that it was an honor that you fought uh, Klitschko. You were came to do training yep. camp at my gym. Yep. What yep. started making your, your names? What what led up to that uh, big opportunity for you? Uh, one of the biggest, one of, one of the most important fights coming up was when I fought uh, Bolo Wills. It was an undercard of um, Mayweather, Baldemir, I believe. Yeah. And um, it was a big fight because he was undefeated. I was undefeated. I believe I was, was there. He was twenty two and zero. Yeah, yeah. That was you know who was his manager? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, Denzel his manager Washington. was Denzel. <laughs> I always <laughs> say this story because after I knocked him out, I always say that I heard Denzel Washington fucking yelling at him in, in the locker room. You motherfucker! You're gonna be playing basketball, <laughs> Pelican Bay. <laughs> you know, but he, obviously he didn't sell that. But yeah, yeah. you know that that was my mentality. Then, but I enjoyed whooping his ass. Really? Why? Did but you have be, a rivalry against him? No, you know, to this day I still talk to him. He's a oh, cool really? dude. Really? Fuck yeah, man! He's one of the. He was one of the one of the nicest dudes. We sparred together. We we he's been in my training camp lots yeah. of times and stuff. But it's not it's not so much that the rivalry or anything that it's more like to say who was the better heavyweight in California. Correct. You know, the yeah. dominance. Because he was he was coming up, he was making yeah. a name for he was, himself. He was, he was undefeated. Yeah, he was making a name for himself. He had a good backing behind him. Yeah. And it, I think you just broke his spirit that time because I never heard from him after that. Yeah, um he he had like a couple fights here and there, but nothing like yeah. that after that. Yeah. Um it's not that I just I I think my will to win was more than his. I wanted to win so yeah. fucking bad. Like, I didn't see no other option. If I if I lose, I can su madre, I'm done. 
Did you really? You had that yeah, mentality? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, fuck yeah. I, I wasn't shit until I made it, until I fucking fought for a title or something, you know? Yeah. That's how I felt. So as I was fighting him, I was beating and I was beating him. Um, it just drove me even more to fucking want to win. Yeah. I know I heard stories that you hated running. And I heard this from I you still as well. Run. I know I heard this story from you that you hated running. I don't hate I didn't hate how, it. How I did you it. how did you keep up hating running and you had that stamina and that ring, man? Um one of the main things is that I know how to control myself. You know You're what breathing. I mean? I, I don't I don't get too fucking like ah, ah, I don't, I'm, there's no fucking jumping around. Yeah. There's no none of that shit. I don't exert energy. And another thing is, yeah, I fucking hate running. I hate it to this day. But I would do stairs all day. I don't mind doing stairs. I get on the stair mill. You know, I, I like that. I enjoy just fucking running stairs instead of fucking running. I know you hate running, but do you regret? No. Really? No. Not Even at fighting all. Klitschko? Not at all. I wasn't tired. He just kicked my ass. <laughs> You know what I mean? Do you think you could have done better if you were uh, um, if you were to be running and all these some of the look because some fights you made it look so easy. Yeah. And when I see that when a fighter keeps knocking guys out, I go, okay, he's gonna get comfortable. He feels like he's gonna knock out everybody. When did you realize that? Hey, fuck! I couldn't knock out Klitschko. I couldn't knock this fighter out. I could have done better. Did you ever go back and say I could? I could no. no, never. 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 No regrets, no, huh? No regrets, bro. I love me. I love myself. Yeah. You know. My bads, my goods, my bads. Hey, I love me. If I don't love me, who the fuck is gonna love me? You know what I mean? He says your kids, and you know. Yeah, <laughs> and, and even even then, you know, no, you know, no offense, but like yeah. even then, you know, they could still fucking just stray and love someone else, yeah. and they grow up and shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I love me. I respect myself yeah. in in my own way. I have no regrets. Before none whatsoever. Before getting to the Klitschko fight, what which was a fight that made. Dan say hey or Al hey fuck um, he's ready. I think um also I fought a day before Mayweather. I forgot who we fought, but I fought um Malcolm Tan. Uh, he Malcolm was a, Tan, Malcolm Tan. I'm trying to we fought the at the Pearl, in uh um in uh the Palms. Okay, it was in that awesome. It, I I personally liked that uh, arena because it it was very intimate and it felt like everyone's on top of you. And oh shit. really? Yeah. Um. Dan was happy as fuck that day, man. Right after the fight, he took he took me upstairs to some restaurant. I had the best steak that I've ever had in my life, and that's Dan. Dan knew really knew how to party, you know. That? Yeah, yeah, he did. After, after he, a fight, he, he knew how to celebrate. He loved his uh um what what are they uh, Coke, his, uh, uh Long Long Island Long Island Long Island, Long, Long Island iced tea. That was his favorite yep. drink. Yeah, I tried it one time because I don't like drinking. Yeah, but I tried it one time and oh, it tastes good. Yeah, wow, it tastes good. Wow, another one and another one because you can't feel the yeah, alcohol. Yeah, no, you don't. And boom, it starts hitting you. Yeah. You know, I go, what the fuck? Yeah. And that was, that's why I hate feeling buzz. Mm -hmm. But the drink tastes so good. I heard it has like seven to eight different uh, hard alcohol in it. It's good, though. It'll <laughs> fuck you up. Yeah, so one thing for sure that I, uh, I learned also is, uh, fuck, when you drink, can't be drinking all that fucking sugar drinks. That shit, because wait, oh my God, the hangover What's the, the biggest, worst. Chris, what's the biggest you gone uh, before a fight? What's the biggest you gone one, up to? At one point, dude, I think I, I was pushing 300. Damn. Yeah, I was pushing 300. Did you ever fight at, at that no, point? No, hell no. The, I think the highest I've ever fought was like at 160 something. And that's still high, in my opinion. That's the highest I've ever fought. But I, I, now I learned, I learned that, fuck that, man. Fat camp sucks. You know, when you go to box, when you're boxing and you're worried about your weight more than worrying about the yeah, fight, then you have a problem. That's a problem, man. Yeah. And I had that a couple times, you know. What where, fight? What, what fights? Um, to be honest with you, I, I don't remember the exact fights, but it was like somewhere like after Klitschko, like a couple fights after Klitschko. You, after Klitschko, you fought a Stavern. Yeah, right? I fought Stavern. I fought. How I was training camp for that fight. Well, let's go. Let's go here to the Klitschko fight. When you when you were here training here, I know yeah. you were. I saw your training and all that. Were you going through any issues and all that through in the Klitschko fight, or you just didn't give a f heck? No, nah, bro. I, I I always have my own fucking little demons. No, you know? of course, of course, I always of course. got a little shit going on, and you know. But when it came time to fucking train, I was always there. I was fucking present in the moment. I was fucking working my ass off. Anything that happened outside of things, you know. 
It's my own shit. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I, I used to fucking uh, go out and do whatever the hell I wanted to do. And it's, I'm, I've never been into fucking drugs and shit. Yeah. I never, but I could drink like a motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite drink? Um, Now, it's like Tito's water. <laughs> <laughs> just keep, just keep, you know, just I'm, no, but 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 when you were training, uh, beer or oh, hard liquor, um, for a while it was beer, yeah, yeah, but now I, I can't now I just take a couple of ultras and shit, and that's it. I don't drink as much as I used to, but when You're I good. drink, I drink because I think you, I think when you get older, you start settling down, you start thinking, man, uh, this is not, it's not good, it doesn't taste good. Do you ever feel like that? Nah. No, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. You know, I'm I'm fucking self destructive sometimes, man, and um, to a fault. And sometimes, it's, sometimes it's to my favor. Yeah, you know, because there's no quitting me from fighting Michael Tan, which started making a name for yourself, and then you do, you end up fighting um, Klitschko to fighting Stavern, which is the biggest. To you, what was the biggest fight in, and and in your mind? Because I know a lot of fighters. Um, one of my biggest, obviously, Klitschko was. I remember. I will never forget that. Like the arena was rocking. It was at Staples Center. Um, mm -hmm. the song that I came out to run this town, man, it was it was just crazy. Kobe Bryant was there watching me fight. Fucking the governor was there. Yeah, you know, um, Ron Artest, all these people, and I was like. I was fucking mind blown, bro. Yeah. That people wanted to watch me fucking fight, yeah. and after the fight, I cried. I yeah, cried. I, I cried, and, and I was there. Just and it was it, it was like very dejecting because fuck, I wanted it bad. I wanted it, and I was I was trying. This what dude, is it? What what kept you from doing what you do best uh, that Klitschko did? Honestly, man, Klitschko by far is. The smartest fighter that I've been in the ring with. In what way? He used so little energy to move so much. If I like, you know, people would be like all oh, running, all doing yeah. all kinds of shit. This was just a Boom. step, a step, pop, pop. Very methodical. Yeah. Very measured with you're, everything. You're, he you're did. A typical European fighter style as well, right? Ah, I don't even want to say that because it's not even like a typical European because he's not really up like that, but he's just mature in the ring, if it makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, he was no, very yeah, mature. Yeah. Me, I was just fucking so full of energy and I just wanted to fucking get in and he'll be like, pop, Move. pop. And I'm like, ah, ah, You started pop. getting frustrated? What are you saying? No, nah, not that I was getting frustrated, but shit, getting hit, it fucks with Does you. It, what, was he... This, By far the, the hardest, hardest puncher. The really? hardest. The hardest. Even did though he, he didn't did drop he, me, he did didn't... Did he buckle you in any way? Like, yeah, fuck, he, damn. He threw, I remember he threw a right hand, and he fucking hit me. My head was like... Wah. And I felt like this fool was trying to punch someone behind me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he yeah. fucking just punched through my fucking face. That's probably what fucking started rattling my brain a little bit, yeah. you know? Did you ever go back to the corner and say, fuck, I don't know, I, I can't continue, nah. no? No, nah. just fuck no. You die in there. Hell no, let's get it, yeah, man. I was I was young and fucking I was hungry and I wanted to win so yeah. bad. Do you think going back, and, and I know there, you say there's a lot of stuff that you don't regret doing that, that's who you are, but going back to that fight, you know, especially after you say you cried, right? Do you wish you could go back and say, well, I could have done this better? I could have done, I could have, because everybody that, has something they could have done better. That fight, I literally got it six weeks, seven weeks before the fight. I had a six week camp, five and a half weeks. Why is that? Because he was supposed to fight, who was he supposed to fight? Um. You know what, I I think he's supposed Prince, to fight. he was supposed to fight someone yeah. else. And the, the fight fell through because the other guy tested positive for fucking... Uh, whatever. Steroids or whatever yeah. it was. So they, I got the fucking call last minute. They're like, hey, you want to fight? I'm like, fuck yeah. yeah. You never turn out title yeah, fights. No, never. Never. You know, um, that fight I had five weeks. The fight against Wilder I had five weeks.
So you saying that Klitschko hits harder than Wilder? Fuck yeah. Really? But there's different kind of different kind of uh, um a power, power. And it, yeah. Cuz Klitschko's like a strong man, like fucking like mature. Like a fucking hammer, right? Wilder is like a like a whip. Pow, psh, you feel that shit? That shit's gonna sting like a motherfucker. Yeah. So that's that's what I say the difference between we'll, we'll, both of them are. We'll we'll get to Wilder right now, but going to the Klitschko, from round one to mid fight to the end fight, where did you did you have start having any doubt? Like fuck, I, I can't get this fucker. No. I can't get this guy. No, no. Honestly, like I swear to God, I never gave up on myself. I kept fucking yeah. trying and trying and trying. Be- the, one of the main reasons I became in love with boxing was because of Chavez. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, man. Okay. That was, was that, that one fight. He was your ne- he was your number one. Uh, Hell yeah, he was my idol, bro. And to to see him knock someone out like fucking Magic Taylor after getting his ass kicked for eleven fucking rounds. Yeah. Even though he was winning, like in my opinion, like he was hitting the the hard punches, but. Fucking he was losing Major that fight. Taylor was whooping his ass. Mm-hmm. And uh that was my mentality. All it takes is one punch. Keep going. Keep yeah, grinding. Till keep you going. Get yeah, till I got him, but I never got him. Did you feel like you had uh Klitschko hurt in any round or any way? Hell no. No. Nah. The, like the only the only thing <laughs> Not even your punch is like you know because you only, know when you hit somebody, you say, fuck, okay, dude, I feel good, solid. You didn't even feel that at all? Bro, the only place that I really fucking hit him. Was his body? Cause every time he hugged me, whatever, I was like pop, pop, pop. Yeah, pop, pop. that's the only time I get fucking really get some good licks in. Yeah. Cause other than that, that from outside you couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't. He kept his distance. So methodical, bro. Yeah. And the, that's the only thing I did was probably leave him like red in his ribs because that's, I was just. <laughs> that's it. That's fuck. the only shit I got to do. Man, cause yeah, I, I'll, I'll go fuck fucking Chris, man. We all were rooting for you. I was there, Dan. I was though so disappointed because you know yeah. you're his fi- you're his fighter, yeah, of course, and he wanted to take care of you. Going to that one, what was the next fight after that, Chris? Because um, I know I both after that fight, I know you were hurt and everything. You cried, yeah. You cried of anger, or you cried just because you thought you could do better, or you were just disappointed with yourself um, in any way, or what was it? Dejected, bro. At the end of the day, it's dejection because you know. And also, I felt like I let a lot of people down. That fucking blew my mind. Fucked me up because all those 15, 20,000 20, people that, yeah. that were there, bro, they were all there cheering me on yeah. or whatever it was. And felt like I let all the motherfuckers down. Everyone yeah, because you're the LA boy. Yeah. You know, he was a, he was a, he was the visitor. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it just it, it just killed, it killed me, bro. It really so, did. So after that fight, you knew that the way you felt that it killed you. That you disappoint a lot of fans. On the next fight, you say I'm gonna try to do something different, or you just went on to do the same thing. You nah, bro. I, I'm I'm the same fucking person since from, from my first fight to my last fight, bro. I'm the same motherfucker. Yeah. You know, I'm I still work hard. Yeah, I still yeah. train. I still do what I gotta do. Maybe the only thing that probably changed was uh um, I partied a little bit more after that fight. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, yeah, shit, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, um, after that fight, I I think I fought uh Brian Minto, or something like that to and, to build you back up, yeah, yeah. to get you another in another yeah. position. What will be after that fight, Pinto? And then what are the fights to get you to where it was Stavern? Because I know you fought Stavern first before you fought Wilder. Yep. So we're gonna go into um, shit. I had a lot of Kevin because you fought another uh, Mitchell as well. What's his name? Yeah. Seth Mitchell. Seth Mitchell. You beat the crap out of Seth Mitchell. Did you yeah, on that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Um, Seth Mitchell was a funny story, man, because he just he had just beat um Jonathan Banks. Yes. And um they were making a big thing out of him. I'm like, this fucking guy, you know, to me, he looked like a fucking loser. No, no, no offense to him, you know, he's a good dude. But yeah. to me, that I'm a boxer, that I was born a boxer, I was bred a boxer. Yeah. You know, this guy is like a football player that came into the box, came into boxing because he yeah. couldn't, whatever it but is. He couldn't you know? make it in football. Yeah, and um, I really worked my ass off for that one. Did you I, really? Yeah, hell yeah. I, I did Was not want to. Henry lose. training you for this fight? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Tra- Henry trained me for all my fights, other than the ones that I've been with uh, uh, Joe, my last uh, four fights with okay. Joe. But um, um, yeah, I worked my ass off because I didn't want to lose to a football player. 
You know what I mean? I would have been, I would have been the worst to lose. How happy were you after? The, well, in, you know what? It's not, it's not that I was. It's not being happy. It's just being relief. Like fuck, I'm done. Yeah. So you started from round one, right? Yeah. Going into the fight, when did you know already uh, on, during the fight that you said, okay, I got this guy. I got it in po- my back pocket. Uh, it ended in the first round. <laughs> so, but I hit him with the right hand. That you knew already. And and his eyes went like this. Wow. Okay. They got wide as fuck. I'm like, oh, hell no, this guy's done. You He's, had him. Oh, I had him. I had him because he lost... When I hit him with that right hand and his eyes went like that, they got like wide and he's like so fucking surprised. I'm like, bro, you're fucking done. What, what was was this on the card of someone or was the main no, event? No, I was the main event. Main yeah. event, okay. I was the main event on that card. And um, yeah, once that, that right hand hit him, the fight was over, man, in my opinion. You know, and you could feel it when somebody is punching you and it's arm punches. Yeah. That's what he was doing. He was like, kind of gave me a couple arm punches. Like, oh hell no, bro! You this shit, him. That's this, it. Is, this is not gonna work for you, man. Yeah. So I just took him out of there. After that fight, what was the next one? Oh, uh, Severn. That was the first one. That was at the USC Galen Center, right? No, nope. the, the Galen was the second. Oh, the second one. The first, first one, one was, was in Ontario. Vegas. Ontario, yep. At Ontario, a at really? a Citizens Bank. Bank, okay. Yeah. Um, the f- third round. The first round was. Very competitive. The second round was pretty good. The third round, I was winning that round, and he hits me. He, he, I do this where I fucking bring the fucking jab to my fucking pocket instead of bringing it back. Uh huh. And I was, and I brought it back to the pocket. And boom. Boom. Even with the right overhand, right, shattered my nose. Like my nose, like in pieces. You couldn't breathe. You couldn't breathe. Oh, the fuck breathing. That shit was bleeding all over the place. The pain. I got up, right? I got up. Uh, f- um, The round was over. Went to my corner. Henry's like, yeah, that shit's broken. So he's like, whatever. I get into the... I I fight 12 rounds. All 12. I went all 12 rounds. Ass. Nine rounds with the broken nose. Wow. And, bro, the pain. I'm telling you, the fucking pain that everything... If you have my hands up, if you hit me right here, right here, right here, anywhere you fucking hit me... It fucking hurt. I could feel my nose doing oh, this. I could oh. feel it. I could feel it. But and you like didn't learn saying, during the whole fight not to to fucking move your head, Chris. Oh, I, you ain't gonna learn the fucking midway through the fucking fight, bro. <laughs> you better get. Because if I get hit, fuck, I have to move my head. Well, fuck, imagine nah. getting working. Fuck, man. That's what, like, honestly, like, personally, I don't, I don't understand, and I don't. I don't empathize with someone that quits with a broken nose. Fuck that. You you, you got a broken nose. You got to keep Continue. fucking fighting, bro. You got to keep fighting. Don't fucking matter. You so you bro- never had no quitting you. That's the thing. Hell no. Because I've seen people quit. I saw my nose. Yeah, I, I've seen you've had people quit on you like that. Yeah. It's fucked up, personally. Yeah. You know, because well, who cares? It's I never had nobody quit on me like that. I'm just saying. I don't know, who? bro. Who? Junior? Charlie oh, Charlie, oh, yeah. That wasn't my fighter. I wasn't training him at that time. But, <laughs> but I worked with... But I wasn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he quit, saying, you know what he mean? quit against uh, Andrew Fire, Fonfora. Fonfora, yeah. Fonfora, Fonfora's a badass, man. Yeah, he was. Actually, those gloves are signed by him. He signed yeah. me a, like, a long-ass letter. But yeah, he made him quit. Yeah, he, he did. He made him quit. Because he didn't want it no more. Mm-mm. No, of course you not. You know, it's a funny story that you say that because I was... Uh, I got hired by, uh, by his uh, lawyer. And we were in Big Bear. And uh, I was in charge because it was Robert Garcia and myself. We were both training uh, Chavez Jr. And Robert was down in Riverside training uh, Abnormatis. And uh, he would come up in the evenings when we were about to start training. And they call me, hey, goes, go check up on, uh, on Julio. And I go knock on the door. And, Fuck, it's not answer. I think he's taking a nap. And so I go back downstairs. And... Uh, they call me again. Hey, go check up on him. Because he, he, I go, he's taking a nap. I go, no, go check up on him. Bro, I had to break that door down. He was gone. He jumped off the second room. <laughs> he dropped off the second floor. I go, fuck, I got me another Chris Ariola, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah. never did that shit. No. Chris, he jumped off the second floor. He broke his ankle. I it's still Because he was not... We were up there. We were fighting... Um, Badu Jack. Oh, Badu. 
Yeah. We were fi- we were he was about to fight. When I say we is because yeah, the team. I, the team. Uh we were about to fight Badu Jack. And uh and they go, bro, you gotta find out. So his wife had a tracking device on him, <laughs> on his phone. That motherfucker, we found out he's down on Riverside. And, and then we kept checking. Where is he now? And he's somewhere in East LA, bro. That's so cool. we knew where his location, he was moving from one location to a different location to try to get him back to, to camp. But bro, let me tell you something, bro. That was, it was, um, it just, we had to force him to go running. It was myself, actually, Robert Garcia, myself, Ellie Setback, and some other people on the team were running with him in the morning because, you know, the thing is, when you have somebody spoiling you, and you're always going to have somebody in that team that's going to fuck up everything for you or yeah. it's going to try to fuck up things for you, right? Yeah. So we were up there, and his uncle, I think he, yeah, right, he passed away, Rafael. After running, he goes, oh, I feel sorry. Oh, no, 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 voy a ir a correr mañana que está cansado. Nah, fuck that. He's tired. No, we're going to go running. Mm-hmm. No, es que está, déjalo descansar. There's people like that that will fuck up the team, bro. You know, he, he was not used to running. Same thing yeah. that you hate. Every fighter, mostly fighters hate running. But it, 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 and when it, there's a lot of fighters don't have that mentality that you have. Mm-hmm. That you go there and they know how to relax. They all get tired. Mm-hmm. Chavez was one of those guys. We had to make him run. Because when he got into fight uh, uh, Fanfora, man, you can know he gave up already. Yeah. He was tired. Andrew just fucking... But man, that's funny that you said that. But just imagine jumping off the second floor, Chris. Bro, so after I um, I lost to um, Stavern, mm-hmm. I was out in um, downtown Fullerton, right? I was out there. We were we were at a, a bar, mm-hmm. and um, after the bar, I probably just had two drinks. I wasn't drunk because I was a DD, right? I, I, I was a DD. Yeah, yeah, people the, don't know. I was a designated driver, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't drink that much. I just had you know two or three beers and shit. Mm-hmm. And I was walking to my car, and there was like a little wall. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pee on the other side of the wall because I need to take a piss. Mm-hmm. So I run, I jump over the fucking wall. There's another fucking floor down. I didn't know that there was a basement. I don't know that there was like an under fucking parking structure. Uh-huh. I fucking fell. And I hit a retaining wall like this, broke five of my ribs, punctured my spleen wow. and my bl- lung, and I had to drive all the way to Riverside. Yourself? Hell yeah. <laughs> bro, I had to drive myself home, bro. Because if if I would have gone to the hospital in Fullerton, my wife would have been fucking pissed. Damn. So I'm like, fuck that. I drove all the way to Riverside and wow. I took myself to the hospital. Just was, so this, what, 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 was this before any other fight? No, it was, it was like literally a week after I fucking lost to Stavern. Damn. After I had my nose broken and shattered and shit. So when you lost to Stavern, were you getting, did they offer you a rematch right away or did you fight somebody else before no, fighting um, him on the second time? I had to fight, I fought, uh, I fought someone else. I think, I think it was Stavern and then Seth Mitchell and then Stavern again. But I, I don't remember exactly. But yeah, I fought. Uh, I fought again, and then I got a chance to fight Severn again. And in that fight, I worked my ass off too, man. I was I was winning. Just got caught. Yeah. It happens, you know what I mean. I got up. What punch did he hurt you with, Chris? Same fucking punch, overhand right. Did the same. Then he busted your nose mistake. again as well. Nah, he just knocked me the fuck yeah. out. I'm con- like honestly, like I remember I threw a jab. I brought it back in the pocket. He hits me, and then like he couldn't learn already. Fuck, he caught me with that. I'm not gonna drop. I my know, head. but I was I was so confident because I had yeah. won already the first three rounds, three four rounds. I was yeah. I was winning. I was winning the yeah. fucking fight, and um, when he hit me, I remember saying, "I wait," <laughs> <laughs> and I fell. I swear to God, I remember Fuck. saying, "I wait," and I fucking fell. And bro, you couldn't get back. You the, couldn't. Get no, back. yeah. I, uh, uh, the best way to describe it is um, when you disconnect the PlayStation or computer. Yeah. Then you mm-hmm. try to connect it back on, and it's like rebooting. Yeah. That was exactly my brain was rebooting. I got back up. Yeah. Like shit. And Jack Reese, you know, he's a good fucking yeah. ref. Um, I was looked in his eyes. I was looking in his eyes, and I got up. He goes, "You ready? Yes. You want to continue? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. We fought again." 
and he drops me again. And this time, like, my face is like this, all in the fucking ropes and shit. And fuck. Counts 10, 9, it's like 8, okay. 9, and then I'm up. You want to continue? Yes. You ready? Yes. All right. So we go back at it. And little by little, I'm getting my bearings back. But by the time I was almost there, fight was over. Damn. Yeah. You couldn't recover. I couldn't. I couldn't. But I I was like this close to recovering. Like that. If two, three more seconds, I've been all right. But nah. Too late. A little bit too, too late. late. A little too late, man. And you know what? That motherfucker, man. Respects go out to Severn, man. But he, it drives me crazy that every time I fought him, he came in the best shape. Then he goes fucking fights Wilder, and fucking weighs down. fucking almost 300 pounds. They were saying that. He was so out that, of shape. So that, so that fight, right? Against me, he weighed 242. Then he fights against Wilder. He fights at 243 or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the body... It's so much different. When he was fighting me, he was fucking pretty solid. He's solid. When he fought Wilder, he was pretty soft. Come to find out that they say that he lost 15 pounds in a week. Yeah, that he was fucking going. He after the after the fight, he had to go to the hospital because he was dehydrated. This is Stavern. Wow. Yeah. So you you caught him right when he was Pff, fucking jerk. Sorry, but yeah, that guy. He always fought me. When he was in his best shape. I have a story like that. This is one of, you know, I I, I was a professional. Yeah, yeah. A professional fighter. You yeah, know, yeah. I, 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 when you really started boxing as well, I, that's when I really started as well in 1989. Mm -hmm. I came to the gym. But I was, I was always in and out. I was not, ever, never took it serious because I was always learning and Joe always had me as an assistant. And one day I said, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm try to, Turn pro because I spar everybody. I spar Suma Nelson. I spar Gabriel Raphael. I spar. Uh, I spar Jeremy Williams. Even though he was a heavyweight at that time, and he would play around. Oh, hard. Michael Nunn. I spar uh, Casa Mayor. Robert the Ghost Guerrero. I spar uh, Alex Ramos. Uh, Alex Ramos. I don't know. Do you remember who Alex no. Ramos is? Alex Ramos is. They call him the the Bronx uh, bomber. Mm -hmm. He was a badass. I used to spar Pete Cunningham, who's a former world kickboxing champion. So I said, you know what, I'm going I'm to try to uh, turn pro. Mm -hmm. I, I I turned pro. I won my first fight, 18-second knockout. So I felt like fucking a, a stud, you know? And then I ended up fighting. Actually, my second fight, I ended up fighting one of your boys. And that's where I remember meeting you more. You know who it was, right? Carlos Bo Borgarin. Bo Bo Borgarin. Ale Carlos Borgarin, right? Mm -hmm. Or Alex Borgarin? Alex, Alex, Alex Borgarin. Borgarin. Yeah. And I, me and uh, your trainer... Uh, at, uh, what's his name? Henry? Uh, Henry. We always talk about this. Hey, because I'm gonna bring Alex Bogarin to whoop your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember losing that fight, and I said, "Fuck, man, what happened?" Because me, I'm a guy. I, I found out that I have a sickle cell, the sickle cell trait. I don't know if it might mentally f mess with me, but I will get tired. In 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 the gym here, I was a world class fucking. World, world champion, Hell a yeah. world beater. I was a badass, bro. Cause I would hang in there and I would give these guys work. And in a fight, I would fight these guys. And you know, I had I had one win, three losses. So I, I fought a second fight. Going back to like what you said, uh, fight this guy. Even Tom Brown messes with me to this day. I forgot the guy's name. Uh, Rick, uh, Repo Rick. Remember Repo yeah, Rick? Creepo. Repo Rick, baby. Repo Rick always had. Whoop that ass. Yeah, he always that. If you know you're going to fight Repo, Repo Rick, you know you're losing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, his fighters will always lose. Yeah. So we fought one of his guys, and he goes, Ricky, please just take it easy on my guy. I go, it's all right, man. Chris, that night before, we fought in Pachanga that night. Um, I couldn't sleep. I was nervous. I didn't sleep the whole night, Chris. I was so, so fucking nervous. And uh, I ended up going in uh, to the fight. Good. I'm winning the first round, boom. Second round, jab, jab. And for some reason, Chris, I had the mentality like like if if I tell myself something, I, I take it to the heart. Mm -hmm. So I go, fuck, I feel good. Ba ba. I'll come out second round. I go into the corner, I go, fuck, why do I feel tired? As soon as I say what I feel tired, Chris, I'm like <laughs> I got the it just felt like it took the whole energy out of me, right? Like a fucking balloon. Like, I yeah. I go out, bah, 
and he gets me into the ropes, and I'm just in the fuck. I'm gonna let him get tired. Bah. I'm gonna let him get tired. I got more tired that they stopped the fight. And when I get out, he goes, Ricky, you know what? That guy didn't sleep all last night. Repo Rick tells me. No. Because he was drinking, smoking weed. <sighs> <laughs> fuck, can you believe that? <laughs> Chris, I got beat by a guy that, you know, that was fucking out of shape. He did. He was out of shape, smoking weed, drinking, and I'm here in shape. I could, I would train hard. He just, and I said, you know what? I'm glad I just, I tried. I gave up. I mean, not, not that I gave up. It's just boxing wasn't for me. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. I tried it. So when I go there and I work with some of these guys, I know what these fighters go through. Mm -hmm. So when they go, oh, I'm too, no, I could push a little bit more. I know where you, where you at. But yeah, that, that was my experience. When you said that, he goes, fucking Sterling. Fuck, I didn't get him at that time. Because I believe if it was that you caught him at that time, you would have beat his ass. Oh, yeah, absolutely. W without a doubt in my mind. Without a doubt in my mind. But I didn't. And I got the good Stavern and kicked my ass both times. Shit. And you know what? I tip my hat off to him because, shit, mad respect to him. I got nothing but love for yeah. him, nothing but respect for him. He was the first Haitian to uh, win the world title against me. So whatever, you know. Damn. And that was vacant, right? Yeah, it was vacant. Damn. Yeah. What about uh, after that fight? Did you end up fighting uh, right away Wilder or you fought a couple more fights? I, co I fought a couple more fights. Actually, what happened was um, I was supposed to fight um, Dominic Brazil. No way. I was supposed to you fight... Know, can I tell you a story about that? Yeah. About Dominic? If you guys don't know Dominic. So... I think it was early 2006, 2007. There was this multi-billionaire guy mm. named uh, Michael King. Not, not, not Don King, Michael King. Michael King was a billionaire. He started King Vision. He owned a, a TV production company. Yeah. He was a billionaire. So he started this, this program called All-American Heavyweight. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember. I remember that. So he started this All-American. Well, a couple of fighters came out of there. Oh, yeah. There was only two. Two or three uh -huh. that really... No, there was a bunch of them, but that made a name for them and became world champion. One of them is uh, Prince Charles. Yeah, Prince Charles. Yeah. Uh, Dominic never became world champion. Nope. So the, those are the only guys that I know that. Uh... Um, El Gallo, El Gallo Negro. He oh was, yeah, yeah. He was, uh... Did was he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I was in there. I was there for the first first uh, first year. Mm -hmm. So I was Dominic's. Uh, you know, me and Dominic. Uh, hopefully, I'll bring him here someday. So back in the days, I used to sell bootlegged movies. I, try, I remember. You remember? Yeah, bro. That, <laughs> I remember like training camp when I when I fought Klesko. You gave me the uh, Hangover, <laughs> and that shit was playing nonstop Stop. in my apartment. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so back then, I, I had a Bentley, and mm. I would pull up to to the gym in, in Culver City. That's where Manny Robles used to train back in the day. Yeah. So I would have to park my car far away. And one day, Michael King comes and goes, am I paying you a lot of money? You know, because mm -hmm. he saw the Bentley. Because, you know, you're in the boxing world. You don't make a lot of money. Yeah. It's just that I had a different hustle. I always hustled my, yeah. my whole youth, you know. So I had the I had a GT with a Manzori kid, man. It was a two-door, six, silver. So I parked and he goes, man, I think I'm paying you too much. And I started seeing what... This is the first time I ever saw a, a white guy that was kind of, and he was a billionaire, like kind of like jealous lad. Someone I felt it, you know. Mm -hmm. You could see the envy, like oh, I think I'm paying you too much. But anyways, going back to Dominic, that's when me and Dominic, I, if he tells you, we used to hustle movies. I used to, he used to bring me a bunch of blank DVDs, and I used to burn them, and him we used to sell them. I used to sell them, give him him, and he will sell his DVDs, and I would sell my DVDs. But that was my hustle back in the days. Yeah. So it was Dominic, it was myself, Jeremy Williams, uh, Simon Brown. You remember Simon Brown, former world champion? No. Simon Brown was a badass. Simon Brown and Sugar Ray Leonard's trainer, uh, uh, Pepe, uh, uh, Pep, they call him Pep. Mm -hmm. And John Bray. John Bray. John Bray. John Bray was a, he was one of my coaches too. So we started training Dominic and all, a lot of these guys got spoiled, man. Because they would get a lot of great salary during the week. It was Dominic Brazil, and the, he's the only one that came out of that that um, that that uh, camp that would be, made him name himself. And you were gonna fight him. So what happened? Um, it was my birthday. It was my birthday. When's your I, birthday? Which is tomorrow. What? Yeah, tomorrow's my birthday. The, uh, the fifth. What? Yeah, All right. March fifth. 
Um, I went to um, Affliction, the clothing brand place. I was bad. They, I used to go there. And, and they gave you me a clothes. bunch of fucking clothes, right? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. So the who, not... who took you there? I just... Um, actually, the, the the main owner, um, I forgot I forget his name, Todd. Todd with a bunch the of white boy. Yeah, big white boy. So, to above yeah, with the hair. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, he passed away? Yeah, he passed away. Damn. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, after that, we w- he took us to like a, some bar down the street. Now, that's the first time that I really drank a fucking uh, uh, IPA. <sighs> Did you like I it or wasted? Oh. <laughs> I, hell no, that's the first ten last. I don't drink that shit. Really? They're fucking crucial, bro. Like I was so drunk, bro, that I opened the they opened the door for me to get out. My body was like jello, bro. I step, boom, broke, broke my ankle. ankle. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. So then I I had to like call the fight off. So then he then he got to fight fucking uh, Anthony Joshua. Right? Yeah. And then after that, Wilder was supposed to fight someone else. And he fought. And and uh, um, the guy that he, Wilder was supposed to fight tested positive for whatever. Yeah. And then Dominic took your no, that spot. No, no. I took that spot. I ended oh, up fighting Oh, yes, Wilder. yes, 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 yes. He fought with Joshua. I fought Wilder. Damn. And that's, I had five weeks to train for that fight. Like, literally, like, I was still in the boot because my shit was still fucking You broke. were still training with the boot? Hell Yeah. Bro. You can't turn that opportunity, huh? Can't turn that shit down, bro. Well, let me, and this is personal, Chris. What's the biggest pay that you ever made on, in in your boxing career? Um, Probably uh, Kletchko. Over a million? Yeah. Uh, over, over a million. Yeah. Man, that was fucking great. Yeah. Fucking, um, and, and fucking Henry taking 30% from your ass, huh? <laughs> fucking Henry. Fucking guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Man, Chris, look. Cause I was fine. You were knocking everybody out, man. You were knocking a lot of guys out. And the thing about it, bro, like I've always, I love fighting. I love it. I genuinely fucking love what I do. I genuinely love conflict. I love seeing people fight. Fuck it. You too. You told me a story a while back when you were training here in the gym that you went to a liquor store. Oh yeah. No, no. <laughs> and I what didn't happened? Go to liquor was... store. I didn't go to a liquor store, bro. I I went to. Ralph's or Vaughn's down the street over here, bro. On, in that big Samoan. On, on Valley, bro. And like, I was parking. Yeah, no, I was leaving. I was leaving. I was yeah. backing up and the guy fucking honks. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't make nothing of it. Yeah. Guy gets off the car like, what the fuck? I was like, what the fuck? So I get off the car. I'm like, what, bitch? We just got in a fight right through the fucking parking lot. Did you knock him out at least, Chris? I dropped him a couple times, yeah. bro. He was a big Samoan. He kicked me and he left me a big old bruise. You told right me here. you came. You told me you go, oh, I got a huge big bruise. bruise. It was on there for a fucking minute, bro. <laughs> but yeah, we got in a fight and then just got in the car and I came back to did the you, gym. Did you like street fighting a lot, Chris? Or Never. Was that the first Never. guy you were fighting in street fighting in a no, long no, time? No, no. I, I've been in a couple street fights, but I yeah, as a kid growing up, never. I never fucking got a street fight. It was as you get older, right? Yeah, as, as I got older, people. It's not that it's shit. not that you're looking for it. It just it just it happens, comes, right? It, ha- it happens, bro. It comes, but yeah. After that, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I like I also like my friends. If they're gonna get a fight, fuck it. You guys fight, fucking fight it out, yeah. bro. Just shut the fuck up. I'm not helping. You I'm do it yourself. You just shut up and you know, fight. That's, that's what I would tell my friends when we go out and and I go, hey, if any of you are gonna start a fight. I'm not gonna back you up, and none of us are gonna back you up. You take care of your shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yep. if you want to, you drink and you think you're crazy, defend yourself. No one's going to hear back you up or we're going to jump, rumble. No, you're going to handle your shit. The only way I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you up. I'm like, <laughs> get up. Come on, bro. That's the only help you're going to get from me. But even friends, like fighting each other. I let friends fight all the time. Yeah. They talk shit to each other. I'm like, well, you guys should just fight, bro. Fuck yeah, it. You, you're the promoter, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm like, y'all should just, just get it over with, bro. Just fucking fight. Chris, now going back from 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 those fights from Wilder, and then um, when you started coming to train with Joe, I saw a big difference when you started training in our gym, and when you fought Andy Reese, that made a lot of noise. You know, I thought I thought they robbed you. It, it was uh, a very close fight. I thought you should have won that fight. You know, there's a couple things about that fight. 
One, absolutely, I fucking was grinding here with Joe yeah. every fucking day. Three the double hours, limb bag, the heavy bag. Everything, 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 bro. I grinded. Um, After I dropped them, right? I dropped them the first round, like the second round, whatever. And I was always, almost had them out. Recently, I ran into Jack. And he goes, Chris, if you'd hit Andy two or three more times, I would have stopped the fight. I'm like, motherfucker, why you gotta uh, tell me that, bro? Why you gotta tell me that? Fuck. Yeah, so, yeah. But in all honesty, like, after that fight, man, I was pissed. The scorecards were sh They were against you, yeah. They were fucking shit, man. Yeah. Like, horrible. Like, the worst... The worst, honestly, I said a draw, or maybe he won by one fucking yeah. round. They fucking put it... They only gave me one round. Two judges gave me one round. And the one round the game is the one that I dropped them. That's it. That is it. I had them because you buckled them right after that. Uh, yeah, you buckled a couple them. You kept buckling them. Yeah. You can, you know, did he hit you with anything that you say, "Fuck, okay, this motherfucker is his." Yeah, yeah. Like in the inside, like I could feel his power, but he didn't hit me not one solid. That's solid clean. Not one solid, but I felt him in my arms. My arms are fucking sore for like a week after that fight. A week or two, dude, yeah. And you know, I used to see uh, Andy Reese at Wildcard when he was 16 years old. He was whooping grown man up, man. I I sparred with him first time. He was like 16 years old. Really? He, he, his, I remember his dad brought him down, and, and he's like, yeah, you're going to spar with this kid. I'm like, I'm going to spar with this fucking fat kid. <laughs> he goes, yeah, you just take it easy. I'm like, take it whatever. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> I get in the we get in and fuck he had fucking fast hands speed yeah speed he moved right I was like damn this fucking fat boy could fight yeah and I knew I knew I knew eventually I was gonna have to fight this kid eventually years later huh yeah years later it's probably like fucking fifteen years after you know because right why when he got the opportunity I was there he fought that German guy he stopped that German yep, guy yep. and boom he gets the call yep it's, it's like a lot of fighters don't understand that when you get this opportunity you have to take it. And, but the best thing about that opportunity that he got was he had already fought. So he was already in shape. Yeah, yeah. He was already in shape. He was just already, he, he probably peaked that fucking when he, go, when he goes to fight out Joshua. You know, if he would've, they would've gave him a fight like, uh, even like a month or two after yeah. that fight, I don't think he would've won. I just don't understand sometimes uh, that when you have the whole world in front of you in a platter, like he did, that he beats for the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, well, I'm sure you're going to be able to relate to this because uh, I, I have never got into that position where you have the whole platter on your hand and you're fighting for $13 million the next fight, but you go out party, eating, overweight, you don't train. I never got that fucking... Nah. But I, I, but, 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 but I understand because... Bro, like like you said, he had just fought that German guy. That German guy, what he got, probably like twenty thousand or something yeah. like that. And going you know, to fight for and a then minute the or something. Next next thing you know, a month later, you're fighting for I think he got like four mil. The first fight was it really? Yeah. Okay. If, yeah, I don't think he got like like a crazy amount. The second fight, he, he got, got thirteen million something. He got change. paid. Yeah. And they gave him money uh in advance. Shit. So come on, bro. You know, money changes you, huh? You know what? Did money it's, change it's, you, it's, uh, Chris? Not too much, cause I didn't have I didn't have like like him but, but, kind but, of money. But but but, 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 but you yes. had money yes. compared to what other yes, fighters yes, had. Yes, yes, yeah. It, did that money change you in a, in a way where it says, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna go do this today? Yeah, of course. You get to do a whole lot more than you did before. Yeah. You know what I mean? I still worked, but yeah, yeah. You, bro. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a kid that was a fucking welfare kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. My mom was on welfare. I remember food stamps when where there were food stamps yeah. of fucking paper yeah, shit. Yeah, now you know me what too. I mean? I, I, my mom grew up. In, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know what it's like to be hungry. Yeah. I know what it's like to be broke. And when you don't, when you don't have it, and when then you, you have it. it out of out of nowhere, shit. Were you a big spender? Um. Yeah. Yeah. But but the only good thing that I did is that I was like, fuck that. I I gotta buy a house. I the smartest it. thing you did, huh? Yep. And I still have it. Cash money. I'm yeah. like Uncle Elroy. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> I'm Uncle <laughs> oh, Elroy to, uh, just, pay, just pay taxes, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's I'm Uncle great. Elroy, bro. How far do you live from Henry? Um, About 
10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not that far, but... I always tell him, bro, you live in San Bernardino. He goes, fuck San Bernardino. I don't live in San Bernardino. Oh, he gets mad. Oh, bro, I, I would too. I fucking hate San Bernardino. <laughs> I, I hate go, bro, that. And then he goes, oh, hey, homie, I'm going to go to your gym in Pocom. I go, bro, shut up. I live in Van Nuys. The gym is in Van Nuys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like, San Bernardino, nah. No, don't go to that city. Hey, Chris, I, and I know you go to the gym sometimes. And and the life that, that, the life that you live, that you live during your fighting times, will you, what advice will you give young fighters that are coming up that they shouldn't do? Because every fighter is going to do they what they want. What they shouldn't do? Well, yeah, what they shouldn't do. If, if they're trying to accomplish to become a world champion? um, In all honesty, I've always said this, that the biggest downfall of a man is a woman. It is, man. You know it what is. I mean? Pussy is fucking evil as fuck. Pussy, yeah. drugs, and alcohol, man. You know, like, you could avoid drugs, you could avoid alcohol and shit like that, but it's very hard to avoid women. Pussy, you can't, huh? Nah, bro, it's very hard, man. And, you know, yeah, a woman can make you, but a woman could also break you, you know? Yeah. Because, shit, you're a man, bro. You, you're you a boxer. You're fucking out there. There's a lot of people. You get all kinds of different attention, bro. And, you know, you can't you can't be doing all that, man. That's, yeah. that's the hardest part. And, and, yeah, women are good to you, but at the same time, they could fucking just deplete your energy, deplete your fucking... Your your mana, your fucking zen and shit. They could just fuck your whole life up. Damn. In all honesty, you know, yeah, drugs, of course, we know that. Did you ever go into a fight, Chris, where you have gotten in an argument with your wife that you said, fuck this? Nah, because you, honestly, bro, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm, I may sound callous, I might sound like an yeah. asshole, but I really just don't, don't give care. a shit. Yeah. I care about me. Yeah. Because if I take that shit in there, I'm fucked. So what what would be the advice to give these young kids? Because everybody wants to be a world champion, Chris. Yeah, you know everybody. I'm sure there's still a lot of fighters up there that wanna that look up to you and say, "Fuck, okay, Chris was a badass." But a lot of a lot of fighters don't know your personal life or where you. In went all through. honesty, I am here because I never quit on myself. Yeah, I never fucking quit on myself. Even if I was losing, I still didn't quit on myself. Even when I lost. I didn't quit on myself. Yeah. There's a lot of motherfuckers after they went, they lose a title fight, they're like, oh shit, I'm done. I'm, yeah. Bro, I'm still, I, I'm still fucking trying, still trying, still trying to get that title. Are you going to have another opportunity, Chris, to, to fight you know what? anytime soon, you think? I'm, I'm, I was supposed to be fighting in uh, April. What? For real? Yeah, yeah. Where about? Um, either Texas. Okay. But I don't know. And then also, I got I got asked if I want to be in Bare Knuckles. I'm like, nah. Oh, man. Imagine. Uh, nah, hell no, nah, bro. I can't do bro, that. Bro, you just had an experience with that fucking Samoan, bro. Yeah, bro, but that's <laughs> different, you know? Yeah, Bare Knuckles. I don't know, bro. I, 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 can't, I, I can't see myself doing that's that. That's crazy. That's like street fighting, bro. Oh, it's straight up street fighting, yeah. you know? A lot, of, a lot of these retired fighters are coming out and doing that, you know? Yeah, I know. And I ain't trying to fuck. I'm ugly already. Yeah, I ain't you trying to get uglier, uglier bro. I, <laughs> hey. <laughs> but pa que, right? Pa que fucking get more cuts, get more fuck that. I'm already ugly as it is, bro. Yeah. Just I just old school boxing, bro. That's all I got. That's all I got. That's all I got, and that's all I love, man. Well, Chris, man, man, I enjoy you coming to the to this podcast, man. I, I'm very thankful. Um, anything, uh, fans, work where, where should they follow you? Your platform, your social media, Instagram. You know, um. Instagram, Chris Arriola. That's the only thing I, I fuck with. I don't do no Twitter. I don't do none of that shit. So, yeah, Chris Arriola on uh, Instagram. Check it out. And another thing, man, you know, message goes out to the parents, man. Just be there for your kids. You know, Ricky was asking, you know, um, what do you give advice to those kids? I I don't have no advice to kids. I have advice to parents. Be there. That's be it. There for your, be Just there for be your there. kids. Don't, don't matter what they want to do. Don't matter if they want to play soccer, they want to fucking be support about, them. Just be there, because it'll take them a long fucking way. And they never, re they never forget that. Hell no, that's why I, <clears throat> I do my best to do be there for my kids, because my dad was there for me. Yeah, I am where I'm at because of him. You know, I'm glad you see that's something like in in every every and in every episode that we do here, I learn something new. You know, and and you brought something up. Um, you know, I've been separated from uh, the mother of my kids for almost fucking 16 years, I believe. And I try to make time for my kids. Mm -hmm. And my oldest, she's going to be 29 years old, man. Fuck. 
she's a grown, she's a woman. Yeah. You know, but I have my 16 year old daughter now. She loves uh, volleyball. And it's funny that you said that because yesterday, it's, and I asked her, hey, oh, wh where were you? I go, oh, because she lives with her mom. I went to, to play a game. Volleyball, you gonna invite me? She goes, no, dad, because these games are not important. I go, no, every game is, is important, but just let me know so I could go support. Mm -hmm. She goes, okay, dad, I will from, from, from now on, I will. But, you know, I want to be there because my, my dad tried to be there because my dad was traveling and working a lot. He was a, a truck driver, you know? But sometimes I, I slack off, be honest with you. I slack off, but I, I want to be there for my kids. You know? Yep. Yeah, I want to be there. Well, at least uh, uh, you said something because they do get that. Because I regret, man, my dad wasn't there. My mom was. I wanted to play baseball. I wanted to be a professional baseball player. Yeah. Just like your son. But I was never pushed. I yeah. tried to be basketball. I never, you know, fucking short for basketball, but I wanted to play. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. And boxing is the one... You know, that's why Joe Goosen became like my my father figure. You know, my Joe and I, we've gone through a lot. I've been with him since I was 13 years old. And he's the one who got me out of the streets. It, because of him, I'm 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 where I'm at, to be honest with you. Uh, it's no discredit to my dad because yeah. my mom and my dad were great. Just that they raised us like any other parent raised us on, on their Hispanic, way. Hispanic, Hispanic yeah. parent, yeah. Yeah, and, and Joe was like my white father, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I still remember that uh, when I was young, you know, we have our traits. You know, I grew up gangbanging, and I, uh, my job back then was to steal pullouts. You remember the pullouts? Yeah. And then the face. The pullout? Pull yeah, the pullout stereos. If you guys don't know, you that are young. Google it. Yeah, pullout stereos were, it was a thing back in the early 90s. That it was a stereo, Alpine or Kenwood. You carry it. You, It goes in the dash, and you pull it out, and you carry it with you so they won't break in and steal it. But... I knew the game already that some people, instead of carrying it, they would put it under the car seat mm -hmm. and I would break in. It would take me less than 30 seconds to steal a stereo. I'm not proud of it, but I'm just, hey, the, the people are going to know the story. You got to do what you got to do. That to one day, Joe had a fighter and Gabriel, they were managing Carlos Navarro, the Navarros. Oh, my God. The those, Nacho, Carlos. Those motherfuckers. The, I remember them from the amateurs. All, El Zurdo de Oro. Zurdo de Oro. He was they were all badass. Are you kidding me? So Joe ended up getting a lease for them as the you know the manager management. And Carlos had owed me some money. He had left with a different trainer after that. He had owed me some money. So I found out that Joe had got him a brand new Cherokee. The Cherokees were the shits back then. So Joe ends up repoing the car and he takes it to his house. And one day I go into Joe's house. <laughs> And I still, uh, the, the, the DVD changer, uh, fuck, I forgot, I even forgot the name. Uh, it's a, it was a CD changer, you know? Oh, in the it, car. Yeah, so you guys don't yeah. know, a CD changer was, instead of putting one CD at a time in the back of the car, you put a CD changer, you could carry put up like to 10. 10, 10 to 15 or 16 uh, uh, CDs, so you won't have to keep changing them. And I went in the back and I just basically stole it from freaking Joe's house, the guy that Took me out of the streets, and uh, you guys hear that story from Joe soon. But yeah, that was our the, that was my job back in the days. Yeah, was, <laughs> gotta have a hustle, bro. Shit. Yeah. So yeah, you know, um, I want to be there for my kids more. You know, I, I really do, and I spend time with my daughter, my youngest one, but my oldest one, she's mature, she's grown up, she has my kind of personality as well. You know, her birthday was yesterday, actually, uh, on the on, Pisces, on the third. Bro. Yeah, Pisces. Yeah, I remember buddy Stan Palmer. His birthday is tomorrow, actually, same as yours. That's badass. Well, Chris, thank you for coming, man. Gracias. I appreciate it, man. Uh, it means a lot, man. You. Thank you. All right. Peace.